question I get all the time is how do I create joints and uh, animate in Fusion? So I'm going to show you two, two different ways. Um, one is with assembly joints and one is just using the animation window. Um, so if I want to do some assembly joints in here, uh, first thing is I need to make each body a component over here. So I have a component for this last piece, component for the piece right here, and a component that uh, represents this little cross piece right here. I want to make kind of an armature out of this. So I can simply click the joint button or hit J. Um, and then as I move my mouse around, notice it plots this little guy and he can kind of rotate based on where my mouse is, which can be very annoying. Um, and so I want to click what I'm like revolving around or what is the joint uh, here. So right here, I want to basically select this edge so that this piece can rotate inwards. I'll show you what it looks like correctly done. So I'll click this piece first, then I'll click this piece, and now I have this nice revolution. And we'll set the limits and things for it later, uh, but that is uh, a correctly made joint with what I, you know, what what pivot I desired. Um, an incorrectly made joint will look like this. Oftentimes I see students do this, where it'll uh, revolve in the wrong way or they'll select these in the wrong order. Well, they'll maybe they'll click this one first and then this one, and then you got the whole other thing rotating around. So you want to select, um, if you're thinking of like an arm, you want to select the outermost piece first. So let's start by making a joint. I'm going to use this component over here, and I want to make sure that this little uh, disc that you can see, I'll kind of zoom in here, is facing the correct direction for the type of rotation that you're looking for. So this disc represents the rotation so if I snap it right here, I'm just moving my mouse around, that means it's gonna rotate in the, the, the shape of that circle. So it's gonna rotate around this, uh, like as if this is the main axis. So I'll click that first. Then I'm gonna find the other point that I want it to rotate around, which is right here, and I'll click that. And that will move these next to each other and start to spin to make sure this is in fact the rotation that we want, okay? Sometimes you have to change things in this motion menu. Uh, this is where we can set the maximums and the limits, so I can check this minimum and maximum box, and that adds this little guy right here, and you can click and drag these different flags to set the limits. So let's say the furthest I want this ever to go is something like this, this way, and would really just be like, you know, flush, zero degrees would be the maximum. I don't want it going into the other object. Um, and I can hit preview limits to sort of see that and make sure that that looks correct. All right, cool, I hit OK. And now that joint's made, so let's make the next joint. I'll hit Joint, and I'll pick this piece and that piece. I'll do another limit right here, so I'll set my maximum at zero and my minimum at roughly like 80 or something. So I'll say OK, and now I can actually come in here and modify these. If I double click this, I can move the joint around uh, and hit Return to set the joint. Um, and this is really useful whenever you're doing these like big operations where you want separate components and see it, it even respects the limits. If I try to go to the limit, it snaps it to the other side. Um, and uh, it'll, it helps you kind of understand the, the motion of these things. So one of the things you can do is you can make a motion study if you wanted to like render this out for a client or something. Um, so a motion study uh, is just a really easy way to basically, it's, it's a little more mechanical than... Uh, what, what I'm going to show you in a second, but it's a really easy way to just show them the range of motion that you have. Um, I'll hit return on that. I'm going to go to a symbol, do a motion study. Uh, I select which joints I want to animate, so I'll pick that one and pick that one as well. And then it gets me this chart. Uh, this chart is basically a timeline where I can click to plot points if I just double click. And I can change the angle at various points. So let's say right here, I'm going to go to like negative 25 degrees. And uh, here I'll go to negative 60 degrees on that one. Um, and then I can hit play and kind of preview that and see how it moves and jumps around. Um, this can be rendered out. You can save that motion study. Um, it's you know quite useful, but personally, I like to just... Uh, use joints whenever I'm, I'm kind of testing how things should move. Now to actually get them, I'm just going to undo a few steps, to actually get them uh, animated into like a video, we can use this animation window up here. And the animation window is quite cool. Um, I'm going to jump it to the front. You have this kind of front area. This, by the way, is like a scratch space, so you, you won't really use that too much. 
So what happens is any changes I make along this timeline are going to be reflected as an animation. So for example, if I like zoom in my camera here, and then I move the playhead out five seconds roughly, and then I move my camera, it's just created an animation that shows that change, right? It's a simple keyframe animation. I can come in the middle of that animation and make other changes, like maybe I move my camera down here. And so now I have this cool animation. If I hit spacebar, by the way, you can preview that. So hit spacebar, it does this kind of smooth thing out and then up and over. So uh, to delete any part of your timeline, you can just click it and delete those actions um, and they'll, they'll go away. So um, what we want to do is we want to modify these things to rotate together. Now, unfortunately, the animation menu so far does not support joints. So you're going to have to do this manually. So I'm going to hit transform components and I can select these different components. So let's say I want to move uh, this component first. I'm going to have to do this all manually. Uh, I'm going to move further down my timeline. So let's say at five seconds, I want this component to be rotated slightly in. So whenever I click it, uh, it sets the pivot to the middle, which is not exactly ideal. So instead, here, let's transform components. I can click this set pivot, which will then let me choose where I want to rotate it from, which would be this line right here. I can hit this check mark to say I'm done. And then I'll rotate around that. So let's say I rotate right here and say, okay. So now that made a nice animation. Ooh, very glitchy, look at that. Not sure what's going on there, <laughs> but uh, it, did a, it did a kind of rotational animation around that point. Um, you might have to, uh, play with that. I might just be a little bit buggy here. Um, let's say I could I could do another component right here. Let's try to transform that. Um, let's again set that pivot right here and I'll pick that point. Say OK. And then I will modify that just a little bit. Hit return. Let's see if it did the same thing on this one. OK, see it doesn't look like it did. So it's just that first one that's kind of being buggy. We can always extend this animation, by the way, by pulling it further out or pulling it in. You can adjust where it is on the timeline. Yeah, I'll have to delete that original one and see what's going on there. I might have just clicked something weird on the pivot. But you can see on the second one how uh, clean that is. So this is pretty much the standard, and then you just click Publish to share the video out. Uh, but I do like to, to learn how to use these joints, and, how to, and I like to teach people to use these joints because I think it's... Uh, quite useful, uh, especially because you can do those motion studies and save those out to people. Uh, but yeah, that's the basic process for making an animation and creating joints in Fusion.